All right, so we had fun with invertebrates and fish, which are also vertebrates. Um, but there are also other groups which are either totally dependent or at least partially dependent on the marine environment in both reptiles or including in reptiles, mammals, and seabirds. So we're going to cover each of these. The least represented in these is reptiles. So reptiles, there aren't very many of them found in marine environments, but there are some, and there are four groups that are represented represented one sea turtles and um, sea turtles are probably the most charismatic and um, one of the things you think about when you think of the ocean are sea turtles uh, swimming around we've got sea snakes are also called sea crates the marine iguana is the only lizard and you have a species of crocodile that does inhabit the marine environment the salt water crocodile uh, mostly in estuaries not in full salt water so we'll go through each of these um, individually, starting with our sea turtles. Now, all species of sea turtles are threatened or endangered throughout the world. Um, an endangered species is one that is in harm's way, very likely to um, go extinct if things don't change. A threatened species is at risk of becoming endangered. So they are generally better off than an endangered species, but are heading toward that same fate of an endangered species. There are eight species of sea turtles. Now that number might change depending on how you split some of them geographically. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think the green sea turtle can be split into two different species geographically. All right, sea turtles are not fully marine, so they do have to inhabit the land at least partially. Um, and this mostly just includes, however, them coming up on land to lay their eggs. Every other part of their life cycle, they go into the sea. Uh, morphologically, you have an upper shell called the carapace and a lower shell, which is called the plastron. They share these same characteristics with um, uh, terrestrial turtles. Or freshwater turtles as well. They have very powerful jaws but no teeth and they mate in the sea. Uh, so males, males and females will congregate for mating in the sea but they lay their eggs on the beach above the high tide line so they are not submerged in water over the course of the tides. Females may lay up to 800 eggs in seven different clutches or seven different nests every two to four years. So they don't come out every year, but uh, maybe at least every other year. And what's interesting about turtles, and actually other reptiles do this as well, but the sex is determined by the temperature of the nest. Um, so if they are warm, they will be one sex, and if they were, are cold, cold, they will be another. After about 45 to 75 days, after laying the eggs, they will hatch and then swim out to sea and be free to grow into big sea turtles. So the conservation of sea turtle nests is one area in which citizens are often employed to help guard the nests, mark the nests, and when they hatch, make sure as many of them return to the sea as possible. There are many different predators which will take advantage of their vulnerable state after hatching and or dig up the eggs and eat them. And even humans will dig up the eggs and eat them as a delicacy, but uh, not so much anymore as more conservation is, um, is becoming more of an awareness of the regular people all right, green sea turtles are probably the most abundant, and it is very likely they will be delisted as a threatened species soon because they are um, rebounding from lower numbers. They're the only herbivorous sea turtle. They eat sea grasses. Uh, if we remember uh, about sea grasses, we need to have clear, unpolluted um, waters that are close to shore, so they have to have light next to them. They nest in tropical areas, but have been found as far north as North Carolina. So you might even see these, well, not in the field trip that we were going to go on, but um, not too far south from there. The loggerhead sea turtle is the 
least vulnerable or um, least threatened. Oh, that's its uh, that's its conservation status. Um, and it feeds mostly on invertebrates such as jellyfish and crabs and mollusks. So one of the things which puts them in danger is the amount of plastic in the ocean. So plastic looks a lot like a jellyfish, jellyfish when it's floating around, and sometimes they will ingest plastic, which is bad. The leatherback is the lar largest of the sea turtles. It can grow over six feet and thousand pounds. Also feeds off jellyfish um, and can dive deep to feed off of other prey items because of its large size. It can store more oxygen than the other sea turtles. All right, here's a website if you would like to go and um, answer more questions about sea turtles. In fact, for your quiz, you will do this. Uh, what are the major threats to sea turtles? Sea snakes. Sea snakes are pretty cool looking, if you ask me. Uh, but they are also super, super poisonous. Okay, the sea snakes or sea crates, uh, there are 55 species which are found in the Indian and Pacific ocean mostly in southeast asia they have a tail which is flattened so it acts kind of like a flipper and can help them uh, swim through the water better most species are three to four feet in length as adults so not like terribly huge uh, but uh, large enough and they breed at sea most of them are ovoviviparous which means they lay eggs inside their body. Those eggs develop and they have live birth. Um, and they are not very aggressive. So even though they are very, very venomous and that helps them catch their prey, they do not uh, bite very often, at least bite anything other than their prey. Okay, here's an example of one here. I actually had an opportunity or was invited to go to um asia with i can't remember exactly where i think it was taiwan and study sea crates with a professor at byu and i turned it down and now i regret it all right the saltwater crocodile is found in australia and in some parts in the indian ocean western pacific islands it is not in fully marine it is will go in these uh, estuaries mangrove swamp swamps and rivers in the open ocean um and they are a predatory species that will eat all types of prey items including chicken as these people are feeding one here but they will also eat humans so they're very dangerous so in areas where you have saltwater crocodiles you do not want to swim they are large at about 20 feet some of them can be as large as 30 feet but that's very rare this is a um a local uh, tour group that goes out and shows people saltwater crocodiles and then feeds them. Uh, this is not ecologically a good idea because then they become friendly towards humans and look at them as a source of food. Uh, but since they eat people already, maybe it's not a big deal. But um, anyway, this you can see this saltwater crocodile is missing an arm. Uh, this is a well-known crocodile. They know this one. They see it a lot. It comes up to the boats often to get fed. Um, so they kind of have an agreement. Uh, you don't eat the people and we will feed you and take your picture. Okay, marine iguanas. This is the only marine lizard. Um, and they are only found in the Galapagos Islands. They are herbivorous, feed on seagrass and algae that are near the shore in that uh, subtidal zone. A lot of their time they spend basking in the sun and they are generally darker in color um, and they do this so they can heat up so they can get enough um, thermal energy to dive into the cold water and feed they are black um, they're really cool I actually saw them when I went to the Galapagos Islands on travel study a year ago um, here's a picture of one and they are very similar to other iguanas, except they swim, they dive, they stay next to the shore. Um, and they're relatively tame because they evolved on an island which did not have humans. 
All right, so now we're going to move into birds. There are many groups of birds which have evolved to live next to the sea and eat their food from the sea and nest near the sea. They are similar to mammals and they are homeothermic endotherms. And they have oil on their feathers to prevent water from getting in and making them heavier. Uh, their shells are hard, not leathery like reptiles, and they often nest in colonies, generally on islands which are away from predators. They have complex mating behaviors with dances and funny things they do to attract their mates. And they have invested parental care where they lay on their eggs, allow them to um, keep them warm until they hatch, and then also go out and hunt for them and feed for them until they are large enough to leave the nest. Penguins are a, a very specialized group of seabirds that spend a lot of time in sea and they don't fly. So most, a lot of seabirds still fly, uh, but these ones don't. Uh, and they use their flippers, similar to flight, just in the water to swim. They mostly live in Antarctica. However, there is one species that lives in the Galapagos Islands, which is near the equator. <laughs> Um, and they have uh, many ways to regulate their body temperature, including um, waterproof feathers and a large layer of fat. Now, when you have a large layer of fat, that means you're very nutritious for predators. So um, killer whales and leopard seals will hunt and eat them. And there's a video of them doing that there. Uh, their feathers also trap air, and air actually acts as an insulation. And so they will spend a lot of their time preening their feathers um, to allow the air to trap it in there. Males and females share parenting responsibilities. Sometimes they'll switch. Uh, the males will guard the egg, and the females will go out and hunt, and then vice versa. Uh, and they can also create this kind of milk substance. It's not milk, but some sort of regurgitated uh, fish food that they can give to their young um, similar to milk but not produced by mammary glands here are some more seabirds okay you've got uh, a couple penguins there i think that's the emperor penguin and it's chick uh, a masked booby i think and some other uh maybe a blue-footed booby but those are all different types of seabirds all right there are then another group of birds, shearwaters, petrels, albatross, frigate birds, pelicans, and cormorants, and uh, seagulls as well. They are more similar to terrestrial birds, and they don't really spend a lot of their time in the water or on the water, although they, many of them can, uh, but they do generally hunt in the o uh, ocean for fish. That's it for birds. Now we're going to go on to mammals. All right, there are 4,600 species of mammals. A mammal has hair fur, is a homeothermic endotherm, similar to our birds. They have live birth. There are some that still lay eggs, but all uh, eutherian mammals, which most of them are, give live birth. Then they have mammary glands, which release milk, and they have a large brain to body size ratio. There are four groups of marine mammals, mammals that live and or depend on the ocean. Uh, pinnipeds, which are actually a group of carnivores. There are um, a few carnivore species specifically that aren't pinnipeds, including the sea otter and the polar bear. And you might also include the Arctic fox, but uh, we'll just stick to those two. We have sirenians, which are completely marine, the dugong and the manatees, and the cetaceans, which include both toothed whales and baleen whales, dolphins and porpoises, and the great blue whale. So we'll go through each of these individually, starting with pinnipeds. So pinnipeds are seals and sea lions and fur seals. Sea lions and fur seals are closely related, and they have traits which are slightly different than seals. Now these are both mostly marine species. However, they do spend some time on land um, basking in the sunlight um, or on the ice. So seals, you can tell them apart by these characteristics. Seals, which is the picture on the right, do not have an external ear or have external testes. 
Uh, for land, they don't walk on their flippers. They just kind of do the worm to move along. And they swim with their hind flippers and their their front flippers are just for um, steering. And they have a very short neck and a very fat. Okay, sea lions and fur seals, you can see they do have external ears. They have external testes. They have a longer neck. They swim with their front flippers and their back flippers are more for uh, steering. And when they're on land, they can turn those back flippers from po pointing back towards their tail to turn around and point towards their head, and then they can walk on land a little bit. It's pretty awkward, but still, they can do that. All right, so I've got some pictures here. Oh, wait, a few other characteristics. So seals and sea lions are about the same range of um, sizes. There are some seals that can be very massive. We'll show you some pictures of those. Um, some seals also, again, can be larger in weight. They both eat pretty much the same thing. Fish species, invertebrates, some selfish and cephalopods. Their ranges are pretty similar live throughout the world except seals you don't really find in the indian ocean sea lions uh, you don't generally find as far north or as far south um, but everywhere else um, seals prefer coastal areas with shallow waters near those abundant um, parts of the sea and so do sea lions okay so here are pictures Top left, are these seals or sea lions? Okay, well you can see they actually have some longer necks. They're using their flippers to walk on them. So this is a sea lion. Uh, the guy in the middle, that is seal on a sea lion body. So that was, it would have been better if they would have put that on a seal body. Uh, the guy on the top right, that is, you can see there's no ears. And he's also laying with his belly on the ice. So that would be a seal. That's called a leopard seal. All right, in the middle on the left, you've got a sea lion. You see his big front flippers and his ears sticking out as well. On the far right as well, that's a sea lion. The one in the middle in, of the middle group is a seal. Bottom left, seal. Bottom right, uh, also looks like a seal. Okay, so again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for ears or no ears. Uh, I'm looking for the size of their necks. I'm looking for the flippers, whether they're walking on them or they're using them to um, swim, the front flippers or the hind flippers. And we can do, look at some more videos in class. All right, walruses. These are guys that are kind of in their own group. They have a similar body form as seals and sea lions but they have these giant tusks, um, which they, and they are also capable of walking, similar to sea lions. They mostly eat mollusks such as uh, clams and oysters, but they can also eat seals. So they can eat actually a variety of things, kind of crazy. Uh, they live to be about as much as old as 30 years. They live only in the Arctic Sea. So they don't live down in the south. So they are associated with the Arctic. They're very fat. Um, and they generally live in just shallow water where they can go and get these bivalves. Uh, some things about walruses that are generally concerning is that the sea ice is starting to melt. And when that see when they're on the sea ice, it's nice because they can create this circular pattern where they can sit and everyone is still kind of near the edge even though um, there can be a lot of them on one area of sea ice but on land it constricts them in one direction so they only only half of them are next to the ocean uh, and this makes it harder and harder for them to get out on land and if there is a stampede which sometimes happens uh, they can get crushed and many of them especially their young can be killed
All right, some more carnivores then, or moving on to yeah, carnivores that are not pinnipeds. We've got sea otters. Uh, we mentioned sea otters before as um, becoming new targets of orcas. Um, and how important they are for maintaining the kelp forest by eating sea urchins. And you can see one eating a sea urchin at the bottom right there. They have very dense coats of fur. So even though they look really big and fluffy, that's just because they have lots of fur. They actually don't have lots of fat on them. Um, and so they have the most dense um, fur of any mammal. And that allows them to trap air in there fur and keep warm when they're swimming so they also spend a lot of the time similar to birds or penguins um grooming their fur to get that air trapped in there so they eat more than sea urchins they also eat crabs mussels octopus octopi octopuses and fishes and sometimes they will use tools so you see this guy has a rock at the bottom he will hit clams or sea urchins against the rock so that they can then break it open and eat it. They live in coastal regions throughout the eastern North Pacific Ocean, although they are uh, and have been endangered and rebound and endangered again. Um, also live close to the shore. Here's a sea otter in its kelp uh, community. Uh, they can actually float on their backs and just rest like that for a while if they need to. All right, polar bears. This is the largest land carnivore. Um, has a, well, other than there are some brown bears that are bigger, actually. Males are generally larger than females. Um, they can be up to 10 feet long. They can weigh clo uh, close to uh, three quarters of a ton. And the, the females are much smaller. They mostly eat seals, um, but they'll basically eat any marine mammal and or things that they can find, uh, whether they're scavenging or hunting. They typically live about 18 years, but some have lived over 30 years, and they live all over the Arctic, including Russia, Alaska, Canada, and Greenland, and or Northern Europe. Um, some of the problems that they're having is, again, the ice is melting, and without ice, it makes it very hard for them to hunt. Um, so the concern is that with decreasing sea ice, we will see a decrease in polar bears, um, which you may have heard of that before. All right, uh, we're going to move on to a different order, Cyrenians. Um, these are manatees, and there are three different species of manatees. The ones that we're familiar with live in the Caribbean, and they are the West Indian manatee. Live in the uh, some of them live as far south as northern Brazil. There's also a freshwater manatee species that lives in the Amazon. Um, that one's not marine. Um, and then there's a West African manatee. You can see that in the orange there. They live in Africa. Manatees are not uh, are not very fast, although they do have a, a streamlined body with a big round paddle taped shell shell tail. Sorry, not shell. Uh, sometimes they have algae growing on them, and they'll look green and brown, but they are normally gray. Be up to 13 feet in length, weigh up to half a ton. Mostly eat sea grasses, so they're going to live close to the shore, and they need clear, unpolluted water. Uh, they, however, can go generally a long time without eating in the winter months, uh, where they'll generally try and find the warmest water possible and sometimes go up into rivers. Um, and they live then in rivers, bays, canals, estuaries, and coastal areas. They have lots of vegetation. They also need fresh water for drinking. So they'll live in these estuaries, but go to the freshwater source to get uh, less salty water. If you feed them lettuce, they get really fat. So don't feed them lettuce. Um, you can go to some places and swim with the manatees and feed them, which is something I would like to do someday. 
maybe with some SVU students. All right, cetaceans, this is a very diverse group. Lots of marine mammals. They're completely marine, don't ever go up on land. Uh, there are a few species, however, that are freshwater. Um, so we got dolphins, whales, porpoises, orcas. They all are cetaceans. Their forelimbs are modified into flippers, so they don't have any digits. Uh, they don't have hind limbs. They are completely absent or very small and embedded in the blubber. Um, and their back tail then is called a fluke and it moves up and down, which is different than how fish move, which is side to side. Their nostrils have moved to the top of their head, which allows them to take a breath without um, fully taking their head out of the water and it is called a blowhole. So cetaceans are the toothed whales. Um, sorry, there's two groups in cetacea. Toothed whales, which are called odontocetes, and they have a single blow hole and teeth. And the baleen whales, which are called the mysticetes, have two blow, hole, blow holes and no teeth. Instead, they have this giant um, growth of keratin, which occurs in long strands or plates. Um, and is used to filter feed. Baleen whales are generally larger, and the blue whale is the largest living animal on Earth. Baleen whales have these long, flexible pouches, uh, which kind of look like an accordion, um, which allow them to engulf lots of, of water. Um, and then we talked about the, the baleen as well. Um, and actually not all baleen whales have these gular um, pouches. Um, and some of them actually just have really long baleen and big heads. And some of them have short baleen and these large throats. Uh, it's not letting me go to the next one. Okay. They are all filter feeders, the baleen whales. Uh, they take huge mouthfuls of water, and then they push the water out, and whatever was in there is trapped behind the baleen. And there are 13 species, including the right whale, bowhead whale, gray whale, blue whale, humpback whale. Some of them will feed together. So the one on the right here, this is called echelon feeding where they do kind of like a flying V in the water and whatever krill run away from the one in the front will be captured by the two on the side behind them. Some of them can also form these large um, bubble nets where they blow bubbles and it traps a bunch of fish and then they go and swim under uh, into the net of fish that they have created and all gulp at the same time. There's some cool videos of that on YouTube. All right, here's your baleen whales, at least some of them. I did uh, some research on the bowhead whale, which is a very arctic whale, similar to the right whale, which you may see these on the Atlantic coast, but the bowhead whales are only in the Arctic. All right, you can actually tell different species of whale apart by their blowhole. So what's going on as they, as they blow air into the or they blow out and bl then breathe in, goes off in different directions. Uh, the position of their dorsal fin or back um, when they dive, and uh, whether their tail comes out of their water, what that tail looks like, the position of the tail when they do that. And so if you go whale watching, um, the good professional whale ID people will be able to uh, identify them based on those characters. All right, toothed whales or odontoses, they do not have different types of teeth like you and I do. All of them are pretty much the same. They're called homodonts, and they're very small peg-like teeth. Um, they're adapted for grasping and tearing, so they generally swallow things in pieces, but don't chew it up like you and I would. Uh, the teeth of dolphins are, have, are cone shaped and interlocking, and the teeth of porpoises are spade shaped, kind of like a shovel. Beaked whales have only one or two visible pairs that kind of stick out like a snaggletooth. And 
Anyway, those those are all the different types of odontocetes: dolphins, porpoises, belugas, narwhals, sperm whales, killer whales, river dolphin, dolphins, and beaked whales. Here are some of them. You can see here they're they're pretty diverse in their um, shapes and where they live. The sperm whale is said to have is able to make the largest sound of any living thing, um, and it's thought that maybe it uses some of that sound to stun its prey. Here's some dolphins jumping in the air. So majestic. All right, they have a bunch of adaptations to allow them to dive and to d dive for a very long time. But because they don't have gills, they always have to come up for water. So some of the methods behaviorally that they do include the apneuistic breathing method. And this is where they basically go up and breathe as m out as much carbon dioxide as possible and then they can hold their breath longer and die for longer they will also collapse their lungs um, and uh, that prevents them from uh, causing problems later when they dive which has to do with compression they have more blood they have more hemoglobin and they have more myoglobin all those things are used to store oxygen in their blood um, and then they have elastic tissues in their lungs to help them expand and gather more oxygen when they do their apneuistic breathing. During a dive, they're able to use less oxygen by reducing their heart rate and reducing the blood flow to the extremities and other areas that don't, won't be required to hunt or, um, find their food. Their muscles have a high tolerance for anaerobic respiration uh, when they run out of oxygen. And uh, the byproduct of anaerobic respiration, which is lactic acid, like I said before, the rib cage and their lungs collapse so that they can prevent themselves from getting decompression sickness. So it's pretty amazing all the things that they can do um, to allow them to die for a very long time. They also, the toothed whales, have an ability to locate and um, find prey and or other things in their environment using um, echolocation, where they make a sound. It goes out of, it's made in their blowhole, goes, is shaped and amplified through a organ in their forehead called the melon and then bounces off objects and is picked up actually in their jaw, which then vibrates with the inner ear, and then it processes that information to determine what's in front of them and where it's moving and things like that. Now, this is great for water because sound moves very fast and very far in water. Um, and so where you could only see for a little bit, you could actually echolocate for a very long um, and greater range of area in water. I wish I could echolocate. Some other cool things that um, marine mammals do, uh, specifically whales, they will form these songs for long-range communication um, with the whales. Uh, sea lions and seals will also bark. Um, they will play, including have sexual play which is not very common for many animals they'll jump out of the water which is called breaching and this may be for play or maybe it's a display for um, sexual choice uh, and sometimes they will do this thing called spy hopping where they hold their body out of the water as much as possible they also will migrate. The gray whale migrates from the Arctic Ocean north of Alaska all the way down to the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. So this is the longest migration of any uh, marine mammal. So here you can see um, the pink area up by Alaska. This is a very fertile area. Lots of um, plankton can be found here for marine mammals to eat during the summer months for a short window and they'll migrate migrate all the way down to the gulf of california for breeding and having their calves uh bowhead or sorry humpback whales to have a lot of different migrations north and south from 
uh, Antarctica up to the equator and from the Arctic down to different tropical areas. Um, there is a weird phenomenon we don't fully understand, which includes uh, strandings, where uh, if one organ, if one whale or dolphin is stuck on the sea on the beach, sometimes lots of them will come and get stuck on the beach, and uh, we think maybe it is has to do with their social organization, um, but we also have there's other theories about why this happens. So in 2002 in July in Chapin Beach, 58 pilot whales were stranded and died, even though volunteers tried to save them. So it's kind of mysterious. Maybe they're already damaged or dying or have some disease or something. Um, but it is uh, a kind of a sad thing that happens every once in a while. And science don't, scientists don't fully understand it. There are some interesting marine, uh, marine mammal reproduction patterns. Uh, they do have internal fertilization, so they aren't broadcast spawners like fish. Uh, some pinnipeds will have harems, so one male and multiple females, um, but and they will actually mate on land, but most other marine mammals will do it in the sea. They also have what's called delayed implantation, so they will mate in the fall but and fertilize that uh, zygote but it won't implant into the uterus until months later and that allows them to be born in the spring rather than in the middle of the winter where they would be very hard to take care of so gestation is normally 11 to 12 months can be a little bit longer a little bit less depending on the species and calves are born tail first and then when they are born they're generally helped to come to the surface so that they can take their first breath so here you go here's a it's like a porpoise of some sort and the tail of its calf coming out being born all right here's a table from your book it shows all the different marine mammals seabirds and reptiles and their important characteristics i think that's it for us